Welcome back, fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Uh, this is going to be a, just a short video segment on kind of workplace concerns and corrosion. I'm starting assembly on the tail section here. So I've got my horizontal stabilizer spar laid out in front of me. You can see a scotch bright pad in front of me. When I took my parts down to a friend's uh, bending brake, the 10 foot bending brake, to bend up these longer parts, it's an older older bending brake, it's all steel, and it had a thin film of iron oxide rust on it, just from sitting and being old. I mean, you could literally, you know, brush some of the iron oxide dust off of it and everything else. I didn't think much of it at the time, and I wasn't too concerned about it because I was more intent on getting my parts bent due to the fact that I didn't have a brake long enough. So I'd waited and waited and waited and uh, finally took the parts blanks down there and went ahead and bent up the parts. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this video or not, but when I finished bending the 40 thousandths parts, some of these parts ended up with just a light dusting of that iron oxide rust. And so it was a simple matter to brush it off. But because of the weather and the timing, when I got the parts home, I didn't bother to clean them. So they sat and sat and sat with iron oxide, that thin film of iron oxide dust on them. And what I didn't think was going to happen was exactly what happened. The iron oxide rust actually ended up corroding into my aluminum. It ended up uh, having either a chemical process or galvanic corrosion, if you will, uh, and etched into the aluminum. Now, it only etched ever so slightly, uh, slow, so slightly, in fact, that you can remove it with a Scotch-Brite pad. But it's important, uh, the workplace concern here, of course, is that it's important to make sure that you store your parts uh, in a clean environment and if you do contaminate them with some kind of dissimilar metal or um, even a dissimilar metals corrosion that you do clean that off immediately so that you don't end up with a corrosion on your aluminum parts. Now again because the etching that took place was so just very minimal and you can you can clean it up with a scotch bright pad I'm not worried that I need to remake these parts or that they're going to be structurally unsafe or anything like that. I'm, the scotch bright only takes off just very 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 tiny little bit of material and if you think about it if you're going to prime your material anyway you have to scotch bright beforehand to rough up the material so polishing out the corrosion with a scotch bright pad is you know maybe only a half a step further than roughing it up with a scotch bright pad so i'm not worried that i'm taking off too much material it's it's microns worth of material really the only important thing is is that any etching that you do find in the material you have to completely scour that out. If you don't, then you're still going to have the contamination from the previous amount of corrosion in there. So with these uh, spars that I made up here, I've got to go through and make sure that they're all, you know, decontaminated. And then the, the doublers here, they have the same, same problem. So I've got to go through and scotch bright any corrosion off of there. One other concern of corrosion that I had is you can see over by the motorcycle there, I've got boxes and boxes of parts. <clears throat> when I got the welder and I started doing repair work on my bending brake and fabbing up my welding cart, I was using the uh, abrasive chop saw to do that. You've seen that in a previous video. And because I'm so constrained with space in here, the you know iron filings from the chop saw just go everywhere. The sparks, the iron, you know everything. So when you're when you're welding or grinding or using a flat disc, it just goes everywhere. Anyway, so consequently. I was doing a lot of grinding on the bending brake to make the hinges and all this other stuff and then of course chopping up metal to make my welding cart and I wasn't paying enough attention to where these sparks and where these iron filings were going and so what ended up happening is <clears throat> in my boxes of parts I ended up getting little iron contamination iron shavings and everything else now the discoloration you see here is not actually rust or anything like that it's uh, liquid contamination so I actually have um, aluminum shavings and stuff just kind of stuck to this part but there are some spaces where some I don't know if you can see it but the very faintest uh, little spots here are a little bit of that galvanic etching that had happened on my spar so what that means is a lot of extra work remaking the parts like I said, would be kind of silly at this point simply because, you know, it, it, at least if you're going to prime your parts, you've got a scotch bright anyway. Now, some of these I'm not going to do full priming on every single part. So a lot of this just means more elbow grease for me to polish out any 
uh, chemical or uh, galvanic etching that's occurred. But it's I've probably added a good solid 10 to 12 hours of scotch brighting to my tail section pieces that were contaminated, which are just a couple of spires and doublers. So maybe maybe 5 to 10 hours worth of scouring for that. But then another 10 to 15, maybe even 20 hours worth of scotch bright scouring to remove any etching that might have occurred from the iron filings getting onto my parts and contaminating them. So again, you really, really need to make sure that you're keeping a clean shop space and that you are paying attention if you're, if you're doing different tasks that involve different you know, metals and things like that, that you're paying attention to cross-contamination and things like that. Could have saved myself a ton of time if I just simply stored those boxes of parts in my basement or in a closet or something like that while I was doing all the other um, steel fabrication work. So very important consideration for you guys. Don't do what I did. Don't end up with cross-contamination and galvanic corrosion before you even get assembly going because it's just a waste of time. It's ridiculous and you, you're going to add hours and hours and hours just in elbow grease trying to polish out these problems. All right, so another quick note about this corrosion business. When I first started polishing out the corrosion on the spar, I did it with my bare hands, no gloves, and it was hot, so I was sweating a lot. So I, I probably spent two hours scouring the uh, horizontal stabilizer rear spar free of corrosion. The whole time I was dropping sweat droplets on it. I was touching it with my hands, which were also sweaty. And your sweat contains salt. And salt is a corrosion accelerant. So when you scour aluminum enough with a scotch right pad, you actually scour away the protective aluminum oxide coating that is present on bare aluminum, at least in this alloy. And the aluminum oxide uh, starts to reform within 30 seconds. I mean, it's, it, it starts reacting with the oxygen in the air and reforming a protective aluminum oxide coating. The problem is, is if you've scoured it away and now you're introducing things like fingerprints and sweat, is those will re-etch into the metal and then the aluminum oxide either won't form over that portion of it or it'll it'll encase it into the metal which means you'll have corrosion still present in your metal part so i've actually had to go back you know two days later when i came back out here i found several fingerprints and sweat droplets that had re-etched the the aluminum after i had spent hours uh, trying to get that out so uh, when you are if you run into this problem where you're scouring out corrosive etching or anything like that uh, make sure that you're not dropping sweat onto the part and make sure that you're wearing gloves that protect from either sweat and or oils from your hands so you're not reintroducing something that can etch the metal before the aluminum oxide has a chance to coat back over so if i get this all cleaned up and there's no uh, corrosive process going on the aluminum oxide layer will reform over the part and then i can handle it barehanded uh, without corroding it any further. I can sweat on it, I can pour stuff on it, whatever. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just when that aluminum oxide coating has been scoured free that the aluminum no longer has any self-protection built right in. So keep that in mind because if you do run into this you don't want to scour out a bunch of corrosion and then come back a day later and find all your fingerprints have etched into the metal corroding it further. So uh, that's it for that last tip on that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that tip helps. Uh, one quick update, I uh, had some computer issues, I did some software updates, and my video editing software is now not usable, so I either have to relearn uh, a new software package, which is probably what I'm going to do, or to use either the native YouTube editor or something else, and uh, so far I'm not having a lot of luck. So this is just a quick video I shot with my cell phone, I don't have to do a lot of editing, so I was able to get a video out for you guys. I have several hours of footage to edit together for various things like the fat flap around skeleton that you see over there. Uh, those are all done. And I'm going to be doing the tail section next and some other uh, stuff that I've worked on for you. I also uh, have in a video update for uh, Air Venture 2016. I went out to Oshkosh for the first time in eight years. It's been such a long time. And I'm going to have a video report on that. I spent some time with the Zenith folks. I took some detailed video and pictures of the CH750 factory demonstrator, as well as the cruiser. And went and saw the Stoll competition reenactment and some other things. So I'm hopefully going to have just a neat uh, kind of Stoll-related recap for you of AirVenture 2016. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.